said, Robert, we got a great interview today. Who do we have with us today? I am so honored and so grateful to have this young man with us. He is a radio giant. Been doing this in the business for many, many years. And he has a heart for, for God's people and for music. And he does things with this special organization that I'm going to let him talk about later. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the voice himself, Doc Lewis. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. Hey, I am so honored to be right here. Thank you so much for having me. Man, cuz, I know we've been trying to do this for a long time, but I'm honored just to be on God's Radio 1 with you guys. I tell you what, I love your show. I just want to tell you that. I love your show. I love what you do, man, and keep on doing it. And thank you. I I'm honored to be here. I love your show, too, and I've had the um, great opportunity to be on there, and you have played my music, so thank you so much on behalf of G.O.D. Radio 1. Well, man, you know, that's what we do. Uh, God told me a long time ago, he said, uh, Doc, I want you to throw your format out of the window. And I said, Lord, now, you know, we got, this, you got station managers, you got all these folks and all these folks. Uh, he said, no, I want you to throw your format out the window, and I'm going to give you a format to play. And when he gave me this format, I had to include indie artists, and folk that you don't know mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity to be heard on mainstream radio. That's very, very important because in this industry, um, in the past, those that had the machines behind them were the ones that you heard more about, but God has leveled the playing field. And um, there are so many great independent artists making great strides in gospel music, whether it be on the billboard, whether it be on um, large platforms on television, but the level field is, is if it's good anointed music, God is allowing it to be heard by all. And, and you're so right because I, I, there's a girl that I'm playing, a sister out of Tacoma, Washington, uh, Rishan Nicole, a brighter day, and uh, uh, Marjane uh, Parks. And uh, when you come to the gospel rappers, uh, G. Harris 817, and then I, my man himself, uh, Darrell Thomas, and uh, it's crazy that I would say his name because we played a, we played his song called All in All, My All in All, uh, a, a, I think a month ago. I was playing it and um, got a request from G, uh, G. Harris 817, and we didn't know that this person, this lady was getting, getting ready to commit suicide wow. in Florida, and was listening to the show and listening to that song and end up changing her mind. Mm -hmm. And so I got a phone call from someone say, hey, the lady that heard your show, she was getting ready, getting ready to commit suicide. Jesus. But the song that you played, she changed her life and she wanted to meet the artists. And I, we had no idea right. the way God works and uh, put her in touch with the artists and he was able to minister to her. And that's what music is all about. Come on. Well, well, you know, I wanted to start off by saying that you call uh, Dr. Dean Cuz. Yes, yes. Okay, so so let me just ask the question: Do, do all the cousins have they all shaved their head? Because I've been known as this a, tw a, tw a twin, a, 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 tr a trend with the family is that everybody wearing glasses and everybody shaving their heads. And you know, I'm I'm starting to feel a certain way. You know, you know, I might have to get shaved my head because it seems like all the anointing is coming from this <laughs> dean side of the family. So, so I just want I just had to ask that question, Doc. Well, you know, um, literally, um, I'm a cuss by marriage. Mm -hmm. my, I'm married to the late great Bishop Duffy, a uh, granddaughter, a Bakersfield, of Bakersfield, California, and uh, with my my head, my shaving of my head came in. When I was a kid, because I didn't like to comb my hair, so my uncle, Uncle mm -hmm. Thomas, said, look, we're going to take you to the Wilbur Home Barbershop and, and let him cut it off. And from there, it's just been a, you know, that's that's what I do. But, hey. uh, yeah, you know, you look at all the things, man, they all got, you know, they, they got the glasses and the, and the, and the shaving of the head. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can be a part of the family as well. Okay, I just want to... I'm almost yes. there. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm real close cut. Yes, and and, and Pastor Duffy, the son, um, is a is a wonderful architect who built 
that West Angeles, oh, the, the first, the second sanctuary that they just sold. Uh-huh. Um, he built that, and um, the father had his own barbecue sauce in stores across the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Bishop McCaleb, that was in San Diego once, mm-hmm. came out of that same church. Amen. Oh, yeah. So, so tell me this. You know, what part of the country are you in, and what got you in radio, and, and how does it feel to be known as a legend? Um. I'm I'm in uh, we're in Fresno, California. Okay. And um, what got me in radio? A gentleman named Lau Boudreau, KKXX 104.9, 1975. Wow. Uh, 1974, 73. He came in the neighborhood. Now he was a baseball coach and a legendary radio personality. And he came and asked my grandmother, the late Miss Alberta Thompson. Uh, Say, can I take your grandson to do radio? And I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk well. I had a cast on my uh, left leg and, and, a, and a cast on my uh, right arm, my left arm. And, and But he wanted me. And here's the thing that what God does, I'm like, man, I can't even talk. I, I can't pronounce these words. Mm-hmm. I can't really talk. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but he hired a vocal coach, he hired a physical therapist, mm. he hired someone to train my voice and to to just wow. help me watch and do little things like uh, at that time you had the suitcase, everything within the suitcase. So I was able to, to take the briefcase and take it out and, and set him up and look at all the knobs and everything like that. And I had to, I had to learn the knobs and learn everything. And, and I had these folks behind me. So he gave me a test. I had to go home and just say, say my name uh, three times a week. Doc Lewis, Doc Lewis. Hello, everybody. I'm Doc Lewis. And in doing that, um, Ronnie got sick. Ronnie Brown got sick like, like four or five months later. Ronnie Brown got sick and he said, "Now, are you ready? Because uh, he's sick, and we got to. You're gonna have to go on the air." And uh, so, practice makes perfect, but God makes the the practice perfect. Come on. And so that's how it got started right there. Um, did my first interview with the governor of Louisiana at the age of nine years old. Mm. And wow. and I'm like, man, I'm sitting at the in the governor's mansion with the governor and all these big time dignitaries. And God spoke to me, and he said, if you stay humble, I'm going to take you places that you've never been mm-hmm. in radio. And so that's how it got started right there uh, with Lau Boudreau right there in Gonzalez, Louisiana, with KKX, KKXX 104.9. Well, I got to say it again. It's something about this family because Robert was singing at 12 years, I mean, at, at four years old. And he was so small they had to put him up. On, on, a, on a little pedestal <laughs> so they can yeah. see them and everything like that. But so you know what, too? What people don't know is that in elementary school, I had a speech impediment. I stuttered all the time. So I had to go to a, a speech pathologist and look at God now allowing me to speak to people all over the world. So when God has a call in your life and when God has something for you to do, he's going to always make sure that it works in his in his good. And that's the thing, man. Uh when people say, man, you know, uh, you're a legend. And uh, I really tell them this, man, I'm just a filthy rag that's being wrung out. I ain't nobody. I thank God he just using me in the vein that he has me in, which is radio. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful and grateful that uh, my wife always tell me your gift will make room for you. Because mm-hmm. I tell you all that funny story, man. Um, before I went on Bobby Jones Gospel, I think it was 1995, um, I used to call all the singers, the big time stars, the big time singers. And remember, we used to do those late night musicals and all that. Yes, sir. And I tried, I wanted to sing in, a, I wanted to sing in, in, in the interview to star and, 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 you know, the singers, and they wouldn't let me. Now, no, 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 you know, we, we got the radio people and all that. And they wouldn't let me. So I, I just said, my wife, would, I would go home and practice and practice. She said, your gift is going to make room for you. And uh, so uh, one day, man, it just God just said, hey, look, I'm ready for you to hit the big stage. And when I put you on the big stage, stay humble. Mm-hmm. Don't never think you arrived. That's right. 
even though you people know you all over the world, don't never think you'll rise. And because I I, I don't think I'm I, I'm just Doc Lewis. I'm just your brother. And um, you know that's that's the way it is, man. Uh, when he get those interviews to me, I just ask, let me have one minute. And normally when you say one minute, the artist is going to talk seven minutes themselves. So let me ask you this question. How did you get Doc Lewis? That came from Lyle Boudreau. Uh, my family played sports. Uh, my family, you know, I'm connected to the late Hyde Rod Williams, uh, mm -hmm. who played with Cleveland Cavaliers, Andrew Glover, the Raiders and uh, Saints and Minnesota Vikings and Glenn Darcy with uh, 49ers and uh, Kansas City Chiefs and a lot of other Kim, the late Kim Baptiste who won a title with the Phillies. I'm connected and family members of all those folks. And uh, so sports, Lyle gave that name because I was trying to be like Dr. J. I, could, I was the only little kid that could grip a basketball. Wow. And so when he seen that, he said, um, he bought me them Dr. J's, you know, and, and he said, I'm going to call you Doc. And from there, <laughs> people don't even know my real name. If I don't say Doc, if I say my real name, they don't know who it is. So I got to say Doc. What is your real name? What is your government name? My government name is Gerald Bertel Lewis. And I have a twin sister who uh, her name is Karen Michelle Lewis. And uh, so that's the government name. So if I say Gerald, uh, you know, Gerald is coming to speak. They're like, well, we don't know him. But if I say Doc Lewis, oh, right. yeah, Doc is Yes, because everybody knows you. Yes. Yeah. Now, let's let's talk about the, the, the situations God has put you in to meet these legendary athletic people. Because you've, yes. you've been around a lot of athletic people. Oh, man, a lot of folks. I remember when uh, with uh, Michael Jordan, uh, man, and, uh, Paul George, uh, Man, Hot Rod Williams, Cleveland Cavaliers team, a lot of the NBA stars and fellas. Uh, I'm getting ready to do Jalen uh, Green's basketball camp next month. Uh, I just tell the Lord, so Lord, when you open those doors, uh, help me walk in them so humble to where they'll call me back next yeah. year. Yeah. You know, and uh, I teach young radio personalities today. Stay away from questions that they don't tell you to ask. So uh, a general question that I would tell that I would ask is give us some advice on, uh, you know, give my listeners some advice on how to be an artist, how to get there. Uh, what did you do to get there? <coughs> Help us. And, and, and then they, they, they have to answer that question there because it's a general question. Mm -hmm. I tell them, stay away from anything that they didn't ask you to ask. Right. Don't ask. Especially controversial stuff. Yeah. Now, let's talk you know, about mm -hmm. let's talk about yes, you with, with Special Olympics. Because I've, I've worked yes. with, with um, the Unified Sports, which is a part of the Special, Edu Special Olympics and stuff. Well, I love Special Olympics. Uh, what folks uh, probably don't know or know. I used to play in the Special Olympics when I was a kid. I have cerebral palsy and polio. My brain was dead nine hours. I only weighed eight ounces at birth. And, uh, man, uh, I slept in the shoebox. Wow. And so being premature like that, uh, I think 17, uh, 15 or 17 surgeries that I had to go through. Jesus. And uh, the Special Olympics, I, I, I said this, I think, six years old. Uh, I said, I wrote it down. I said, look, if I'm, if I'm able, I was in a charity hospital in a body cast laying up in the hospital, looking at the ceiling. And I said, Lord, if I'm able to get out of this, if you bring me out of this where I would be able to walk, talk, do whatever I need to do. I want to give back to special Olympics. Mm. And so we go around the world. That's from Northern California to Southern California to uh, Abu Dhabi to Dubai mm -hmm. to uh, Austria to uh, Italy, wherever the Special Olympics that I try to go and volunteer my time. I broadcast live uh, with ESPN. Uh, we do sports. We do it all. And I I sit there and I listen to their story because it's about it's about us. 
Uh, everybody's not looking at us the way we walk, the way we talk. Everybody's walking and talking the same way. And and we have a lot of fun. Yes. And that's why I love Special Olympics. Yes. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, you went through that rough time as a young person. Did your sister also experience that same thing or did? Or was no. It you? She does not have cerebral palsy. She did not have anything. Mm-hmm. Nothing. One of the things I want to say is that I would love for you to interview Reggie Codrington because he's a jazz artist that was a uh, twin, and his brother came out, nothing wrong, and he came out uh, with uh, uh, cerebral palsy himself. Oh, wow. And they said, I need to, well, yeah, inbox me his number. I'll call him. i get him on my show. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing about the... Uh, with, with people with uh, cerebral palsy, what I had, a chemical, it's a chemical imbalance that, um, you know, that muscle tone, it, it don't get no signals to certain parts of your body. Mm-hmm. And so everything is slowed down. So for me, uh, it's slowed down. I could shake your hand with my right hand, but I have a problem shaking your hand with my left hand mm-hmm. and I have 90 degree no movement in the lower left uh, leg and everything like that. And uh, so uh, when I'm playing basketball, that was just a given talent God gave me through my family. Yes. Uh, I love the game of basketball, man. And uh, I always would tell these new kids, look here, what y'all doing there, you know, at Eurostep, that's, that's traveling in my day. But uh, I still can get you on the court, you know. Right. <laughs> and and, and, and um, here's the thing about Special Olympics. I love because basketball is my game. But, man, you, you, you look at them, they swim, uh, flag football. Go- I'm getting ready to go to Minnesota next month for golfing and to be a speaker. Uh, they do it all, every sport. Mm-hmm. And you'd be amazed from track and field. And when I was in Berlin, I looked at, uh, I was at the swimming event. And I'm like, man, they doing, they can butterfly and doing all that stuff like wow. that. I can't even do no butterfly. Right. But these swimmers are good. And they're special, special Olympic swimmers. And I'm, when I say good, they're good. And here's the thing about us. Uh, once you give us a task, we want to complete it. Yes. So we'll go through everything to complete that one task. I, I think it's phenomenal. You know, I think it's phenomenal because it's inclusion and it's allowing um, young people to get the opportunity. Um, that's what I like about unified sports, where it pairs um, kids with um, disabilities with two general ed, and they make what you call unified sports. And it's really becoming huge in the high schools across the country. And we have the opportunity to go to this, the California State Track and Field Championships with a unified team. And I, I think it was such an honor for those kids to be around all those peoples at Clovis, um, Buchanan High School in Clovis, and to run and track in front of all those people screaming and cheering for them. Man, it gives you chill bumps to see um, those young people go forth and do well. It does because, man, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to look up in the crowd and see your mom and dad and your friends and and then it's even more exciting when you come across that finishing line. And here's the thing. You don't have to come across the finishing line first or win because everybody is a winner. Everybody's a winner. And, and, and that's the thing that I love about it. And let me give a shout out to Reedley College, Dr. Sam uh, Morgan and his staff who had me come and speak for uh, the uh, disability uh, month back in March. Uh, I always love to go there because it's a phenomenal program. So colleges around the country, man, thank you for taking time out mm-hmm. and dealing and handling and working with uh, special need uh, kids. I call them kids and adults of, of determined. So let me ask you mm-hmm. a question. This is a sidebar. It's going to be one of the questions that you probably say don't ask, but I'm going to ask it. So here you go. So you have this very distinctive voice. Mm-hmm. Tell me when your distinctive voice got you in trouble. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I'm at home, 
Um, my wife said, you, you need to wash the dishes. And I go into a radio mode, well, good morning, good evening. And she said, no, we ain't on the radio right now. We're not on the radio, but I need you to do that. And so sometimes it gets me in trouble because I'm, you know, that radio voice, every time for me, I'm thinking, yeah, you're thinking on the radio, but no, you need to just talk in your regular voice. Mm -hmm. So it can get you in trouble sometimes too. So, you yeah. know, but uh, I'm honored, man, you know, just to be able to uh, talk like that. And then here's another thing. Lyle Boudreaux told me, he said, look, uh, I'm going to teach you how to get your own voice. So, because I was mimicking his voice. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to get your own voice. So I was on radio one day with him, and, I, and I'm talking, I'm mimicking his voice, and he stopped the show and said, wait, we're going to go back and tape that again because I told you to have, do it in your own voice. Yes. And so, I, you know, and I started to learn. I said, wait a minute. And then I got fearful, like, okay, man, is I'm going to do it in his voice or my voice. I need to do it in my own voice. Yes. So I started working and practicing my voice and, and leaving his because I was good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lyle Boudreaux. And I'm like, man, I can't do that. I can't do that. And we're taping. And I'm like, God, I forgot my line. Right. And so I had to learn how, and I would get in trouble with that. And he said, okay, you're not going to be on radio until you learn and get your own voice. That's right. And so that's see, what see. I got in trouble for. Yeah, see, I could see you uh, uh, talking to your wife, and all of a sudden she say something, you go right into your radio voice. Well, dear, uh, uh, today we're not going to do the dishes because the dishes are not as important as this story that I have. <laughs> that, oh, yeah, that, yeah. She's, she's just like, look, we ain't on the radio. That's what she said to him. You're not on the radio. <laughs> You're my husband. You, you are my husband. You're not the radio guy right now. How long, how many years has it been? Oh man, I um, if I counted the years, it might be over fifty years. Wow! Um, but uh, forty six, I think forty six, forty six years. And you just got uh, honored in Atlanta, the same event that he got honored. Yes, uh, I got a humanitarian award uh, from the Gospel Choice Music Awards. Uh, Jeffrey Helms and his staff does such a great uh awesome job and uh it, it's an honor because uh i tell the artists man i'm honored for you guys to play your music thank you so much mm -hmm. and other radio personalities to be there and we're meeting and greeting some of them just heard my voice and some of them have met me in person and i'm honored to be honest with you i'm honored just to meet them right man i'm like look I want to hear you. How did you uh, get in the radio and what it takes to be an artist? Because, man, I love to sing, you know? <laughs> well, all right. Well, Doc, we we're gonna, we appreciate you coming on and sharing. Um, as as radio personalities, we love to honor and celebrate our legends. Yes. Uh, people that have paved the way for us. We want to say thank you so much for being so integral about the craft. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for continuing to so into the younger generations to continue this legacy. Uh, we're honored to have you as a part of our show. And if there's ever a time that you need us, we are there for you also. El Jerome Battle knows him. You know El Jerome Battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he says, good day, Doc. Well, thank you, man. Have a have, good day to you. And let me give a shout out before I go to Dr. Monica Butler. Uh, Gospel Music Hall of Fame there in St. Louis, where I will be inducted into uh, 2025. Congratulations. Man, thank you guys for having me. Clubs, Rob, man, thank you. I love you. I, I lo again, I love uh, Gospel, uh, man, God's Radio 1. I love your Gospel music, man. I love your artists. I love you guys and what you do, man. Uh, keep doing it, and uh, and uh, send me that information because I, I'm gonna try to get to that concert because I know Beverly is gonna be off the chain. Yeah. Amen. Amen. With that being said, we have none other than the one and only Doc Lewis, right here on GLD Radio One. Dot com.